So with that, who better to kick off the show than LPG Tour Commissioner Molly Marcusaman. Molly, so good to see you. Um, let's start big picture. It's the turn of a new year. Lots to celebrate from the 2023 season. What are your main priorities heading into this new season? Yeah, I mean, we had a fantastic year, obviously, last year with, with a, a, a ton of momentum, both on the course and off the course. And, you know, as we enter into 2024, we just were super excited about the competition, the athletes that we have. We have the best players from around the world competing in the best possible women's golf tournaments. And so we're really excited about the competition and the athletes that we have. We're really excited about the commercial growth that we've seen. Obviously, you know, in sports, we want to talk about the competition as much as possible, but we're, you know, the story in women's sports, these days is the investment and is really in the growth commercially and playing for 118 million dollars this year is phenomenal and I think seeing the growth that we've had in the last uh, several years is just a, a tremendous tribute to our partners and to where the sport is going so we're super excited about that we're we're really digging in I mean from our perspective we're really digging in on the fans we always have the players and the partners at the center of our equation but we're also this year I think you're gonna see just a lot of fan growth both at the tournaments you know the those following us on social through the viewership we're really investing in growing our fan base I think it all starts and ends there really showing more value to our partners more value to our to our athletes and so I think you're just gonna you're gonna see a lot of that and believe me you're gonna see some unbelievable competition throughout the course of the year yeah the biggest prize in women's golf you know playing for four million dollars at the end of the season that's a that's a pretty remarkable thing you know we've have last year in 2023 I think we had six different new tournaments um, and this year we've got some other great new tournaments coming on online and I think we have 16 tournaments over three million dollars uh, which is really a big thing for us and I think we were playing for 10, 10 tournaments last year over three million dollars 16 this year the growth in the income from our players from last year was phenomenal we had three players for the first time ever making over over three million dollars 99 players making 200,000 so the story is really positive the momentum's really good but we see even more growth coming in uh, in 2024 yeah, you took the words out of my mouth. I mean, not only is the 118 million a record price pool for this upcoming season, but that $4 million, as you said, at the end of the year is the biggest first place prize in all of women's sport, which is such a huge thing that CME have put forward and will no doubt make a huge impact. There's still, you know, in all honesty, there's always going to be a disparity between the LPGA and the PGA Tour in terms of finances. What is the LPGA doing to keep striving for that equality between the men and the women's game? Yeah, again, our women are doing really well and the and the growth, you know, 70% growth in two years, but we're not by any means satisfied with this. I think there's just tremendous, you know, disparity in women's sports in general. I think our top player made, you know, 15% of what the top player on the PGA Tour made, not including the P, the uh, FedEx Cup, you know, bonus money. So, so less than 10% when you look at that. So I think we've got, a, sorry, there's a truck coming by us here, Anna, but, um, you know, so we've got a lot of room to go. And to me, again, it comes back to this idea is we need more eyeballs on our athletes. We need more people to see how talented, how good they are, to, to enjoy the competition and to sort of drive towards that growth. So I think that's a big part of what we need to do. And we're investing in that. You know, we have a, the biggest marketing team we've ever had. In fact, we've never really had a marketing team. Now we've got a pretty substantial team. We're, we're focused on selling more tickets, getting more people driving, as I said, to our, to our broadcast and to our social and really getting people to understand who our athletes are off the golf course too and we're we've hired a, a production company to help build the brands of a, of a few players and I think that rising tide will lift all boats you want to watch and cheer for people that you know and that you know how talented they are so um, I think that's a big part of what we need to do and we're very excited about the opportunity ahead yeah I was it's a really interesting point, and it's one that Judy Rankin made yesterday when we had uh, the legendary broadcaster, of course, on the show, and she said, you just need more people to realize how good women's golf is, and you just need to get more eyeballs on the sport. But the question is, how do you do that? And I know you've listed a couple of ways that you're going about that. How important do you think it is that the biggest stars of the LPGA embrace the spotlight that they find themselves in and invest a little bit more time in social media and, and giving a little bit more time uh, to those who do write the headlines just so we do get to know them a little bit better and they do sort of create this brand for the LPGA that it, it, it sort of still needs? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think the LPGA, we have to do a better job of growing our social following. We've done some, we really studied the data to see where we compare to other leagues, women's women's sports leagues, as well as men's sports leagues. And we, we need to keep growing our engagement, but mostly people don't follow the LPGA, they follow our athletes. And so we've really studied that and we're gonna help our athletes do that. We're gonna give them some tools. We're gonna put resources towards it to help them grow those brands. Um, I think it's important, you know, in sports, you follow people, teams that you know and love and so we have these remarkable women who have this this unique world-class talent but they're also really amazing people and so we want you to know their stories and we do want our top athletes to embrace that to be not only great athletes but also to be you know to let people see their personalities because they're funny they're smart they're they're committed to their causes and um, yeah so I, I agree with Judy she's always perfectly spot on and also you know at the tournaments these events mean something they're playing for a lot of money but mostly they're playing for you know their legacy and they're playing for pride and we want to make sure that we've got a great fan base here celebrating their wins putting their arms up in the air fist pumping and and making a little bit more um, noise and a little bit more excitement around our tournaments and I think that will you know that starts the engine flowing and I think it'll just continue to help us grow yeah I think that's really exciting Molly you only have to spend a couple of weeks on the LPGA tour to realize actually there are some great personalities out there and the more we can get to know them um, the better just a little bit yeah. more on the financial growth of the LPGA PGA. Uh, during the week of Thanksgiving, um, the Ladies European Tour members, they ended up postponing a vote which was to determine as to whether they were going to merge with the LPGA. That vote was postponed. It was never really sort of talked about why, but why did that happen and, and where do you stand with a potential merger with the LET now? Yeah, I mean, I think, as you know, we've been in a joint venture with the with the L.A.T. since 2020, and that's an awesome relationship and it continues to grow. I think, um, you know, we, we haven't had we've been updating our players on kind of where we are. We haven't had a real opportunity to, to sit with them because obviously it was the off season. We have a player meeting next week and we're going to share more information with them. So I feel more comfortable making sure that I kind of, you know, talk to the players first. And then after next week, we'll be able to give a little bit more information on exactly where we are with the merger. But, you know, I think just in terms of communicating with our athletes I want to make sure we can answer their questions first and and then we'll be happy to talk a little bit more about it but as I said you know the joint venture we're in a great spot with the LET and we continue to focus on growing um, the LET the LPGA the Epson tour and really glow, growing uh, women's golf yeah and speaking of joint ventures Molly of course the big storyline dominating the men's side right now is this expecting upcoming agreement with the public investment fund of Saudi Arabia now right now the LET does have a connection, but the LPGA doesn't have any kind of relationship with the PIF. Uh, where do you stand on possible future funding or, or even partnering with them down the line? Yeah, I mean, I think our position's been pretty, you know, pr pretty much uh, consistent throughout. I mean, I think, number one, we really believe that an unfractured women's golf environment is critical to the growth. I mean, I think you have to be driving towards, you know, the top, the top tour where everything pathways, everything flows to the, to the best players in the world competing on the LPGA. So that's number one. I think, you know, we have a really strong mission. Our mission is to be the global leader in women's professional golf. And then really importantly, to use that platform to ele elevate and advance women Women. So any decision that we make on any partnership really goes back to that mission. You know, can it continue to allow us to reach our mission of being the global leader in women's golf? Does it allow us to continue to elevate our players with the best opportunities and elevate and inspire women? And then, you know, we look at every decision that comes our way. So I don't have anything new to report on that. I think we're, we're open to opportunities. We'll listen to conversations and we'll see what happens. But the storyline for us is, you know, we, we need to continue to invest in ourselves and invest in the growth of the organization because the product product is so good and we need to be able to showcase it at every turn so you know nothing new to report there but and, and again you know different opinions on all of that but I think we feel like we, we've got a good mission that we work off of and any decision will just bounce off of that how it affects our players how it affects our brands and we make good decisions uh, you know off of that at that basis